my loves, today I am going to be rating popular booktok books. Now I have read a lot of popular booktok books, however I'm not made of money, so I've not read all of them. But I'm going to go through the popular ones I have read, I'm going to tell you what I thought of them in a few sentences or less, and you can decide whether it's worth you buying it. First one we have is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I liked this book. When I picked it up and started reading it, it took a while. It took about, I want to say 50 pages, 100 pages to get into it. But then once I did, I couldn't put it down. And I think I read it then in one sitting after that. It's really good. I like it. However, I genuinely can't remember what actually happens. But I think that's just because she had so many husbands. I can't remember them all. I can't keep up. But the concept I liked, I remember there was a couple twists that I liked. They were kind of predictable, but I still like them. It hasn't motivated me to read anything else by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I feel like all around it's a three or a four. I feel like three is a bit harsh, so I'm going to say a four out of five stars. I would recommend it and I would read it again. I sold it on Vinted, but if I had it, I would read it again. And I really enjoyed it. I think it just didn't stick with me as much as it has other people. But to be fair, I'm not much of a contemporary gal. I'm more of a, if I'm obsessed with a book, it's got to be sort of young adult, you know? And let me tell you, this was not young adult. Then we have The Atlas Six. This was interesting because I loved it. However, nothing happened. It very, very much reminded me of The Secret History, which is one of my favorite books. So naturally I'm gonna like it. There wasn't really a plot. That's me being very harsh. It was really good. <laughs> I kind of liked the fact that it wasn't anything too deep and crazy. It was kind of just like this cool group of people that you're learning about. And it was very dark academic. There was a second one after it and I didn't bother getting it because I felt like the first one kind of did it for me. Like it had the whole story. I was happy with it. I didn't need to elaborate any further. And I really like the characters. This I'm going to give another four because to be honest, the only reason it's not a five is because the second one was a bit of a flop for me. Is that harsh? Does that, does that make it a five? I don't know. Again, it's one of those things where I can't remember much of what happened and I couldn't tell you half the characters' names. And to me, like, if I really love a book, then I will remember the names forever and I will remember the plot forever. For example, ask me about Hunger Games, ask me about Six of Crows, ask me about Shadow and Bone, ask me about Akatar and I will tell you every character, everything, every single plot detail, everything because I like it that much, I remember it. So I'm going to give it a four just for that reason. And then we have Akatar, A Call to Fawns and Roses. Now the actual first book I would not read now. When I reread the series I tend to skip the first one now because I'm just not that interested in it but mainly because I don't like Tamlin and I never did and I don't want to be that girl that's like I I never I I was there first but I never liked him. Sarah J Maas has recently got a lot of slack for her writing skills and I feel like it's a bit harsh. She has some funny sentences um and ways of saying things. Sure. But let's be honest, the books are hard to put down. There's something about the way she writes that it's hard to put them down. And that's why everyone is so obsessed with the series. So overall, I can overlook the weirdness. As a series altogether, I'm going to genuinely say that Akatar has five stars. I read uh, Court of Silver Flames, the one about Nesta. I hate Nesta and there was pretty much nothing that she could do that would redeem her as a character for me. So I'm sorry, I still read it, it was good, but I only really read it for Cassian. Overall, I would say Akatar is five stars. I loved it, it's really good, it's addictive, and I am again addicted to the characters still, the whole world, the universe, love it. Then we're going to move on to Throne of Glass, also by Sarah J Maas. I liked it, I got really into it for about four books, and then I just kind of forgot about it and then didn't really wasn't that bothered about reading any more to find out more about the characters but I think that's just because there was too many books and I can't commit to that <laughs> so overall I prefer Akatar to Throne of Glass she also wrote the Crescent City series House of Earth and Blood House of the latest one but I can't remember the name Crescent City is probably my favorite I'd say Crescent City is my favorite compared to Akatar um, but Akatar is still five stars, um, so Crescent City is also getting five stars. I think the Throne of Glass series, I'm going to give a three, um, maybe a four. I feel like three, three just feels harsh. I'm going to say three and a half. I think Crescent City is my favourite. Again, it's still got some weirdness in it, but it's, I don't know, the whole 
universe and plot line is my favourite. Then we have The Inheritance Games, another five stars. This is a recent booktok favourite. Some of the others I've mentioned have been like popular since like 2020 when they first started, whether this is a recent viral blowing up on TikTok and it's deserved. This is so good. I don't really like mysteries, anything like that. This has made me love mysteries. And I've also bought like crime solving puzzle books since reading this because I love the like games and the puzzles and everything in it. It was it was really good. Loved it, love the characters, love Jace Jameson, love Grayson. I am a Jameson girl, I'm sorry. However, love Grayson. It was just really good. And the latest book, The Brothers Hawthorne, just as good. Loved it. Obsessed. I would so recommend this series. Mm. Then we have Shadow and Bone. Um, wasn't as crazy about this one as Six of Crows. I still did really like it and I remember all the characters and the plot which proves that it obviously stuck with me. I think if I'm looking at it on its own I would give it four stars. If I was comparing it to how good Six of Crows is then it's kind of a two. On its own, it's a great series. It's really fun, I like it. But I honestly would say you need to read that first before reading Six of Crows duology because you will be disappointed. <laughs> then we have We Were Liars. Now, I loved it. A lot of people were hating on this. I loved it. I loved it so much that I made my mum read it and she wasn't that impressed by it, but I was. I don't know why, the plot twist, I just was not expecting. I think at the time, I read it a few years ago now, I was younger, I was probably like not even an adult, I think I would have been about 17, so I mean I'm dumb now but I would have been like dumber. I think now if I read it for the first time I would be able to see the plot twist coming, however back then I did not and the experience of finding out the plot twist was honestly like nothing I've ever read before. Uh, I've never been so shocked. So for that I'm gonna have to give it a five, like it's the most shocked and affected almost I've ever been by a book and it's really short as well it's like so short and I don't know how it did that to me so well then we have The Cruel Prince this series I really enjoyed um wasn't crazy about Cardin the main love interest I just thought he was toxic I didn't like him I know that's a bit hypocritical me saying that after just giving Akatar five stars I don't know if I can't get into the love interest I find it hard if the whole plot kind of revolves around the love interest and I don't like love interest, you know, it, it's tricky. However, I did enjoy it and I did read every single book, so I really can't complain. <laughs> Overall, I'm gonna give this one three and a half stars. I would give it four, but I just remember thinking, this is cool, this is good, I like it, but not being that obsessed about it. If I read a good book talk book, I want to then go on book talk and research like, oh, what do other people think? What are people saying? Like, how did people draw the characters? Whatever. I want to look more into like the details. This I didn't, so it's gonna come down a little bit for that. Okay, now we have King of Wrath. Now I've read King of Wrath and King of Pride. King of Greed has just come out. I have not read that one yet. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to. The only reason I'm not going to is because I'm not that bothered about the characters' relationship. Um, just not too bothered. King of Wrath, I really enjoyed. At first it was hard because I hated, I hated Dante. And I was like, I don't know how he's gonna redeem himself. Somehow he managed to. I, I feel like that says more about me than it does about the book. Like, I think it's just cause like he was Italian and that just redeemed him for me. But I really enjoyed it. I really liked it, loved the plot, loved it, great. I hadn't read anything else by Anna Huang. I hadn't read, um, Twisted Love series, but I'm, it's on my list. It's on my list. Really enjoyed it. Good plot, good twists. Fab. Um, King of Pride, meh. King of Wrath, I'm probably gonna give four stars. King of Pride, I would give a solid two and a half, three. Two and a half's harsh, maybe a three. It was okay. Um, once I fully got into it, I it was hard to put it down. However, I really just wasn't invested in the characters and the storyline. I liked Isabella. I hated, again, the male love interest. Kai was so boring. And I know he was supposed to be boring. Like he was supposed to be dull, but he, it was, she almost wrote him too, she almost wrote it too well, <laughs> but I didn't enjoy it. I also find it hard when an American writer will write like saying how the love interest has like a British accent and it's like, oh, they're posh, like, dulcet tones and it's like they could like 
what do you mean British accent? They could literally be from Liverpool. I don't know, it just makes me cringe a bit when like, they're like, oh, you say like British and blah, blah. it's like, these British like posh men don't really exist. And if they do, they're assholes. Like they're not being written about in a book. Anyway, then we have Six of Crows, which I mentioned just now. I'm giving this five stars. However, the second book was good. I can't remember what happened in it. First book, incredible, remember everything so good love the characters second book i remember being good i can't tell you what happened but it was good so i'm still i'm not going to discredit the series with that um i've also read ninth house by lee bardugo couldn't get into it i tried i don't know maybe if i reread it now being a bit older i could then i couldn't the series after six of crows the um king of scars stuff about um what's his name nikolai couldn't get into that, didn't interest me, couldn't get into it, but I think that's just because, you know, my favourite character is Kaz and I missed Kaz and I love Kaz um, and I want to marry Kaz. So anyway, overall, we're giving it five stars. We're still gonna, you know, we're gonna be nice. And finally, we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which feels very apt because this is now out in cinema. Um, and when you're watching this, I've probably seen it. Um, I've got a vlog, I'm doing a vlog on my TikTok um, of what I thought about it. The book was okay. Again, took me a while to get into it. Took me about, what, 100 pages to get into it. I almost did not finish it, but I pushed myself because I love The Hunger Games so much. It was good. It wasn't written as well as Hunger Games was. I wasn't as, as captivated, enamored. And I'm gonna be honest, and this is before I've seen it, I promise, um, the film looks a bit shit. Like the acting just looks really bad and it has got bad reviews. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but do you know what? I didn't have high expectations for the book. It was okay, I got through it. The plot was okay. The ending was kind of, it kind of made me feel a bit, oh, I wanted more. But I think if the film's bad, it's just gonna lower it even more. Um, I would probably give it two and a half stars, three stars, two and a half, because it honestly took me about a month to read it and that's pretty bad for me. So anyway, that is me rating popular book talk books. You probably don't care about my opinions, which honestly is fine. Um, but I guess this was just sort of like, if you were thinking about getting this book, this is what I thought. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please do subscribe. Every week I do a bookish sort of video and I do a sort of fashion lifestyle video every week. So two videos a week and you can subscribe for free. So if you want to, I will see you soon. Bye.